Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Unity 6. This video tutorial series will guide you through everything you need to know to be able to use Unity 6 and I'll even provide you with all the scripts and the assets for free in each video if we use any. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. The game we'll be building here won't be anything specific but we'll be exploring plenty of methods to making a game and we'll have something playable at the end. We'll be making this game for free and will cost you absolutely nothing as long as you put your mind to it. So who is this tutorial aimed at? Well it's going to be aimed at newcomers to the game development world who have perhaps just picked up Unity 6 or are looking to get started with a game engine but don't know if Unity 6 is right for them just yet. I will take you from a beginner level to an intermediate level by the end. As you probably guessed we'll be using version 6 of Unity but this series will work for any version of Unity so some things may be labelled slightly differently, but all of my tutorial series are built to be future proof as well as legacy proof. So this first segment we'll explore how to get Unity on your PC, we'll explore the hub and we'll get acquainted with the engine interface. What is Unity in and of itself? It's an engine that you can basically import anything into, write some scripts, create a few things and you can have a game by the end. It's a great versatile engine and is much like other engines out there. Obviously it has a few different quirks to itself. How do we get Unity on our PC? It's actually very very simple. You just need to go to unity.com slash download and here you'll see a download button which will download something called the Unity Hub which is this. I'm offline at the moment but that's okay. You can use Unity offline. You need to log in every 30 days just for a check-in but you can still use it offline. This is the hub. The hub is a place where you can store all of your projects and you can see all the projects that I currently have right here. Most of these relate to my tutorials on my channel. The next section down is installs. This section is where you can install different versions of Unity. You're not restricted to just having one version, you can have multiple. At the moment on this machine that I'm using you can see I currently have Unity 6 installed as well as an earlier version here. You can use earlier versions at any point. How do we get Unity 6 on our machine from the hub? Very easy. All we need to do is at the top we need to click install editor and you can see that there is an option for long term support. I would always recommend installing any LTS versions. LTS long term support. At the moment you can see version 6 is in long term support. Same with 2022 and 2021. There are other versions that you can install if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend them at this point. As this series is aimed at Unity 6, we would just need to click install here and it will then install the engine itself. It may take a few minutes, so while it's installing, you may want to go and get yourself a hot beverage, a snack and get ready for when the engine is installed. There are some other things within the Unity Hub, but these aren't relevant to actually learning Unity 6 itself. So we have Unity 6 installed. How do we create a project? Well, let's go back to project and we can click on new project at the top. If you have multiple versions of Unity installed, you can select the editor version up here. You would select six and then you can select any one of these pipelines. A pipeline is a way of Unity being able to create something. For a starter in Unity, the most common pipeline is to use the Universal 3D pipeline. This is the most easy and versatile way of creating your first game or perhaps any game within Unity. There are other pipelines you can use a little later on in development such as the High Definition Render Pipeline or High Definition 3D as it's labelled here. All you would need to do is select your project name it can be anything you want. Then you select your location right here. If you are connected to the internet at the time of doing this, you can select your organization, which is just basically your account. You can also connect it to the cloud and you can use version control if you want to. These are not mandatory. You can use them, um, but again, it's whether you understand whether you need to or not. Personally, for this project, I am not going to use the cloud or version control because I do not need to at this point. Next thing you would do is click 
create project. After a couple of minutes, you'll be presented with this screen that we saw at the beginning of the tutorial. This is the Unity engine. This is Unity 6. If you've used a game engine before, you may recognize a lot of this on your screen, i.e. its interface, how it's laid out and what some things mean. However, if you are brand new to Unity 6, like I would expect you to be at this point, let's go through some of these tabs and windows and understand what they are and why they are relevant. Here on the left, we'll start with the hierarchy. The hierarchy is a place that you can visibly see what objects you have in your game. For example, by default, we have a main camera and a directional light. They reflect whatever is in the scene view. The scene view is where you build your game visibly. So you'll see any 3D objects, 2D objects, icons, anything like that. You will see them within this window here, the scene view. The hierarchy and the scene view go hand in hand. If we were to select the main camera, we would select it in our main scene view. Same with directional light. So as I said, scene is where we can build our game. It's the easiest way of doing it. You'll notice that next to scene view, we have something called game and it does appear like a tab. These tabs overlay one another. So you can have one selected at a time. However, we can change that if we want to. We could drag game if you hold the left mouse button and detach it and it can be its own floating window. The game view is where we can play test our game inside Unity 6. So let's say we've built a very small level. We want to test it to make sure there are no bugs. We would play it inside the game view rather than create a whole standalone application. The tabs that we can move around can be attached anywhere. So for example, if we wanted to place the game view over here next to hierarchy, we could. So keep in mind that all of these windows can detach from the actual engine itself, become floating windows, and they can be reattached anywhere at any time. However you feel comfortable creating your game via your interface, you would just arrange it in that order. Over here on the right hand side, we have something called the inspector panel. And the inspector panel is where we store information of game objects. What is a game object? Anything that we can select inside the scene view or hierarchy is known as a game object. Whether it is a model, whether it is a character, whether it is a camera, whether it is a light, it is going to appear here in your inspector panel. Every single object that you have will have at least one component. What is a component? A component are these items inside the inspector panel. So for example, we have the directional light here that has a transform component and a light component. You can attach any component to any object, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that component is relative. For example, we could attach some physics components to a light, but that won't have any impact because a light and physics based objects are completely different. So always try and keep your components relative to your object. Every single object will have this transform component because this dictates uh, how big it is, where it is, which way it's facing, all that kind of thing. So we have the position here, that's where it's located in the scene. We have rotation, that is which way it's facing inside the scene. And we have scale, that is how big it is. Not every object will have a scale relative to its size. For example, let's have a crate, a wooden crate in our game. We could change the scale and make it extra large. If we change the scale on the light, it wouldn't have an impact because it is not relative. There is no size of light. You would change it in your component settings rather than your transform settings. So whenever using a game object, always keep in mind the components. They are what control everything about a game object. Down here, we have the project window. And the project window is where you store all of your assets and packages. An asset can be anything at all. It can be a texture. It can be a script, it can be an animation, it can be a material, it can be a model, absolutely anything. Anything you import into your game will be an asset. And you can find them in a nice convenient folder down here. You can create more folders if you need to, to keep everything neat and tidy. The next tab along we have is the console tab. And this tab itself is a way of detecting where errors may occur within your game. So if you have written a piece of code incorrectly 
and it's not working, you press play to get into your game and it won't work, you can more than likely find where the error will occur here. And we'll create errors in the future in this series so we can basically use the console to establish what is going on and we can use it to its full potential. So those are all the windows that we have by default. You may have some extra windows, you may not. However, we can add windows if we need to. So let's say we want to add a different tab up here. We can click these three dots here. We can click on add tab and then we can click on anything here. So if we wanted to add an animation, we could bring it and put it there. If we're not happy where it is, we could always bring it down here and attach it here. So now we have three tab windows all on top of each other with easy access. Now, there are different things that we could use and could play with around in Unity, but these are the basics. How do we manipulate things in our scene? That's the next big question. If we're going to create a game, how do we do this? Well, we can click objects inside our scene. We can use our middle mouse wheel to zoom into those objects. If you hold the middle mouse wheel, you can pan around like so. If you hold the right mouse button, you can pan around again, nice and easy. And that is also reflected by these tools up here. So we can use the hand hold the left mouse button and we can pan around on one axis and we can still pan around 360 using the right mouse button. We can zoom out and let's select the move tool once again. You'll notice three arrows do appear here. We have a green arrow, a red arrow and a blue arrow. These represent the X, Y and Z coordinates within a game. For example, the X is represented here with a red arrow, the Z is represented with a blue arrow, and the green arrow represents the Y. Now we can physically change these either within the scene view or over here in the position. We can set this back to 0, 0, 0. What is 0, 0, 0? Triple zero is dead center of your scene. Uh, what is a scene? A scene is like a level, an area, a segment of your game. So we've looked around here now and we've pretty much understood the most basic aspect of Unity 6. And at this point, you may be able to determine whether Unity 6 is right for you or whether uh, you still need to know a little bit more. So in the next tutorial, what we'll do is we will look at importing some assets. We'll look at textures and we'll look at materials and we'll see how they can impact and change what our game will look like. So remember to subscribe Click that notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial and I will see you next time.